If you want to escape low elo in season 14, the champions we recommend in this video are going to be the most optimal for you to climb the fastest. We'll be covering three of the best low elo champions for every single role, so you'll have a lot of options to choose from. However, we would advise that you narrow things down so that you only end up playing one or two champions. If you pick one of the champs in this video and just spam them for solo queue, it's going to be the most efficient way for you to escape the lower ranks. Also, we're excited to announce we've done a massive update adding all brand new courses for season 14 on our website, skillcap.com. And if that's not enough, we upload 10 new Smurf commentaries every week where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. The best part? You can try all this out completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using skill cap, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted in Season 14. Fresh off some massive buffs in Patch 14.4 and our first top lane recommendation for low elo is Volibear. It's not just the buffs that have propelled Volibear up in priority though, as there's a new tank build that is giving him a ton of strength. You run Unending Despair with Spirit Visage and Winter's Approach, and all three items synergize so well together. Spirit Visage's passive amplifies all healing and shielding by 25%, so you get way more value out of the healing from Unending Despair and the shielding from Winter's Approach. This build is just so great for low elo right now because it turns Volibear into this unkillable raid boss who can still output respectable damage just from base stats alone. Playing these tanky champions that can still deal good damage has always been a great strategy to escape low elo the fastest from top lane, as you can mess up so many times but still remain very useful. If you're playing a fighter like Aurelia or Fiora, you have way less margin for error and rely on dealing damage to be impactful. With Volibear, just soaking damage and being a frontline for your team provides so much value, and even if you die in fights, the pure disruption you're able to provide is often enough to give your team time to clean up. It's important you run the correct summoner spells to get the most out of Volibear, as you don't actually want Flash and instead should be taking Ghost with Teleport. The Ghost on Volibear just works so well because in tandem with his Q movement speed, allows him to stick around in fights without getting kited around. Best rune page that you should roll with consists of Grasp, followed by Demolish, Second Wind, and Revitalize. Secondaries are Taste of Blood and Ingenious Hunter. To escape low elo from top lane, playing a champion with incredible split push power can work wonders, and Yorick is the perfect pick. Yorick has a much more linear kit than many of the other split push top laners, and doesn't require very much mechanical skill to succeed with, so he reigns supreme for the lower ranks. When you get a lead with Yorick and have your ultimate available, the side lane pressure becomes relentless, especially with the new Void Grubs providing you with bonus damage damage to towers, it makes Yorick's split push even more lethal for Season 14. When you're split pushing with Yorick in the mid game, always try to be splitting on the side of the map furthest to the next objective. For example, if Dragon is coming up in one minute, you should be planning to make your way to top lane and about 20 seconds before Dragon spawns, you can begin pushing up more aggressively. This works especially well if you have teleport and the enemy has ignite, because if you force the enemy top laner with ignite to come match you in the side lane, you can just teleport into the Dragon fight and easily win a 5v4 for your team. In the case that nobody comes for you in the side lane though, you just completely ignore the dragon and take multiple towers. Yorick, left alone in the side lane, demolishes towers faster than most champions, so if the enemy does not respond to your split, you'll be feasting on their base. You've got a few options for the build on Yorick right now, as there's the Bruiser setup with Trinity Force and Sundered Sky, or the more offensive setup of Profane Hydra and Spear of Shojin. If you're brand new to Yorick, we would advise you playing the Trinity Force build, as it will give you more margin for error. For the Keystone Rune, you can't go wrong with Conqueror, followed by Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand. Best secondaries are Demolish and Bone Plating. Although the first few patches of Season 14 were a bit rough for Garen, after some nice direct buffs and a bunch of item buffs as well, he's back to being a premier pick for the lower ranks. The fact that Garen's W now lasts for 4 seconds early on in lane makes it such a great trading tool to play around. It's really as simple as if you have W up, you can look to trade. If it's down, respect the enemy and play safer. This cut and dry win condition for winning trades in lane with Garen is something that makes him so great to climb out of low elo. A couple of short trades where you play around W cooldown will have the enemy chunked out, and then you can threaten for an all in play with your Flash and Ignite. If you guys want to learn more about Garen, our challenger player Hector has a new commentary for the champion on our website, and we upload 10 new commentaries every single week. There are two viable build paths for Garen at the moment. There's the more offensive core consisting of Trinity Force and Phantom Dancer that will provide you with more burst threat. The more durable setup has you building Stride Breaker instead of Phantom Dancer. Both setups are performing nearly identical analytically right now, so try both out and see what you prefer. Optimal rune page for Garen is Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Best secondaries are Conditioning and overgrowth. When it comes down to climbing out of low elo from the jungle, it's going to be much easier if you stick to a champion like Brand who loves to full clear. Playing more gank reliant junglers like Nidalee, Lee Sin, or Elise makes everything way more difficult for you due to the abundance of options. For high elo, more options can be a good thing once you understand the game fully, but for low elo, consistency is really the only thing you need to climb. Full clearing with Brand every single game, farming up and hitting your item spikes is a very simple way to be consistently impactful. Brand scales insanely well with levels and items, so snowballing super 
super hard early on is not at all necessary to hard carry with the champion. Low elo games are most often than not won or lost off of team fights, and Brand is one of the best team fight junglers. Brand also takes objectives incredibly fast due to his percent health damage, so it makes sneaking in early Baron very easy. If you have Leandris completed and a tank top laner on your team, you can easily duo Baron if you have a blue buff. For the core build on Brand, look to run Leandris with Rylai's, and then third item is pretty situational. Grab Dark Harvest for the Keystone Rune with Cheap Shot Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter. Best secondaries are Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. One of the most sleeper junglers for the lower ranks right now who has become so much stronger due to the rise of a new build is Shivana. Glass Cannon Shivana with Nasher's Tooth and Storm Surge is performing incredibly poorly in Season 14, but that's okay because there's a new Bruiser build that is making her borderline OP. We covered this setup in our 14.4 edition of the new OP builds, and it revolves around a Spear of Shojin Rush into Leandry's second and Riftmaker third. The TLDR on the setup is that all three of the item's passives provide you with ramping damage, so it makes Shivana's teamfight presence incredibly potent. You're also so much more tanky compared to running Nashers and Storm Surge, which makes the build way better suited for the lower elos. Your main focus with Shivana and how you'll carry most games is by hard farming and looking to stack dragons as quickly as possible. If you're ganking with Shivana early on, it should only be after all your camps are cleared, or if you're 100% certain the gank will be a kill. Otherwise, just playing for yourself and hitting six as quick as you can is key. The rune page for Shivana consists of Dark Harvest with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter, Grab Transcendence, and Gathering Storm for secondaries. The first two jungle recommendations we featured were more farm-heavy junglers, so if you really want to play a champion with stronger gank threat, Ramus is the play. Ramus has one of the best level 3 ganks for any jungler due to all the movement speed he gets from Q, along with the point-and-click taunt from his E. There's very few ways for you to actually mess up a Ramus gank, which makes capitalizing on gank opportunities way easier. We actually have a brand new jungle course for Season 14 that covers ganking in detail, so it's a great resource if you like playing those more aggressive early game junglers. At level 6, the ganks become even more foolproof since you have the long range gap close from R. Ramus is one of those champions who can build full tank and still output a considerable amount of damage, which makes him more forgiving and great for low elo. The core build you should be running on Ramus consists of a Thornmail Rush into Sunfire Aegis or Hollow Radiant Second and Jock Show Third. Since you want to be stacking as much armor on Ramus to take advantage of his passive, avoiding heavier AP comps is key. Using your ban on whichever AP jungler is the most played in the current meta will help with this, and right now, Brand is that champion. The best rune page for Ramus is Aftershock with Font of Life, Conditioning, and Overgrowth, followed by Triumph and Alacrity for secondaries. A super strong mid lane champ for all ranks, but even better for low elo in Season 14 is Karma. What's so great about Karma is that no matter how you perform throughout the early game, the champion will always be impactful due to her kit. The amount of damage that Karma can pump out with her mantra Q combined with the utility she brings from her E allows her to carry in many different ways. Some games, all you'll need to do is spam out shields on your fed carries, and other games, you'll be nuking the enemy squishies with Q. Even though Karma Q is a skill shot, it's got a pretty big hitbox, which makes it relatively easy to land compared to a lot of other skill shots in the game. It may take you a few games to get used to the range and width of the spell, but it won't take you very long to feel comfortable on the champion. Karma's rush item was just buffed in 14.4 as Malignance was given some added ability haste. Second item in Karma's build path is Cosmic Drive, so you can stack as much haste as possible for mid-game fights. The optimal rune page for Karma mid is Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter are the way to go for secondaries. There's really no better mid lane champ to help you escape low elo the fastest than Malzahar. The point and click R is such an incredibly impactful tool that takes no skill at all to use and gives the champion a very clear power point to play around. Level 6 is what you're playing towards in each game with Malz as his pre-6 is quite weak. This isn't necessarily a bad thing though because it reduces the variance in your games. You really don't want to be fighting pre-6 with Malz so your entire focus should be on securing as much farm as possible. You will run teleport for your secondary summoner spell so in the case you drop low on health or mana you just use TP back to lane to continue farming safely. Lost Chapter Buy is really where you can begin shoving out waves easier and getting some priority in lane. As long as you don't overexert yourself pre-6 and try to make plays that Malz has no business making, then you should see really good results on the champion. The core build on Malz is a Malignance Rush into Leandry's second and Rylai's third. Pick up Airy for the Keystone Rune with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch, followed by Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. Playing scaling champions will always be more rewarding in the lower ranks than for high elo, and one of the best for mid lane is Aurelian Soul. With how Aurelian Soul's passive works, the more Stardust you collect, the stronger he becomes, so games that drag out and last longer really favor the champion. Soul's main damage source coming out of Q is also a pretty foolproof ability to use, so it really shouldn't take you all that long to get the hang of him. The amount of consistent damage you can deal with Aurelian's soul while being relatively tanky at the same time makes him the perfect low elo champion. The team fight strength of Aurelian's soul is also incredible, as his ultimate in a grouped up fight can be so impactful. The build that you'll want to prioritize revolves around Rylai's rush into Leandry's second and Archangel's third. It's Comet for the Keystone Rune with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Magical footwear and biscuits are for secondaries. A really great ADC that you can look to abuse for the lower ranks right now 
is Senna. Senna is not super popular in the role, but she has been getting a lot more attention in recent patches. The setup that's becoming very popular in high elo that also works incredibly well for the lower ranks revolves around Ghost Blade and Opportunity as your first two items. With Senna, her main weakness is lacking a gap closer, so by building Ghost Blade and Opportunity, you're getting a lot of bonus movement speed to help make up for that. Senna works even better for low elo than she does for high elo, just due to the fact that games last longer in the lower ranks. Since Senna has her infinity scaling passive, the longer games drag out, the better as she just ramps up into this late game goddess. The optimal rune page for Senna is Fleet Footwork with Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Cut Down, followed by Bone Plating and Revitalize for secondaries. If you want to climb out of low elo from ADC for this season, the easiest way to do so is by spamming Misfortune. Misfortune is the perfect low elo ADC right now because her meta builds are lethality and it just makes the champ so easy to pilot. You don't gotta worry about your auto spacing as much on MF and kiting immaculately in fights as just positioning yourself in the back line to unleash that multi-man R is how you'll carry most team fights. Misfortune is the perfect ADC to spam to actually help you learn the game because you'll be spending way less time focusing on the mechanical aspects of the champion and way more on your macro play that really improves you as a whole. The build you should be looking to run on Misfortune is a Ghost Blade Rush into Hubris second and the Collector third. First strike is the Keystone Rune with Magical Footwear, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Run Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for secondaries. This champion is really great for all elo brackets right now as Twisted Fate is our third ADC recommendation. And yes, you heard that right, this is Twisted Fate played down in the bot lane as an ADC. If you've been following our tier list as of recent, you'd know that we've had TF rated very highly in the role for the past few patches now. Who knows how much longer this will last as he may end up getting nerfed in the coming patches, but as of 14.4, he's a phenomenal pick. What's so great about Twisted Fate is that he has both impactful utility and damage, which very few other ADCs possess. It's crazy just how much damage this champ can deal while being able to make plays happen all by himself due to his semi-global from R and stun from W. The majority of ADCs need to rely on their team to make plays happen before they can enter fights, but TF can do it all by himself, which makes him a really great solo queue champion. The standard build for Twisted Fate is a static shiv rush into rapid fire cannon second and storm razor third. It's fleet footwork for the keystone rune with overheal, alacrity, and coup de gras, followed by magical footwear and cosmic insight for secondaries. The best melee engaged support that you can play for the lower ranks is Maokai. Maokai is such a great low elo champion because it's so easy to make an impact with him. Whether it be his zone control from R and grouped up team fights, the free vision that saplings provide, or the point and click route from W, you could be first timing Maokai and still be incredibly useful. A Maokai with flash has the most lethal engaged tool in the game, as there is very little counterplay to a flash W combo. This makes finding catch plays super easy with the champ and should net your team multiple kills throughout each game. It also never really even matters if there's a fed melee character on the enemy team when you're playing Maokai, because you just lock on to them in fights and they can't do anything. A fed Katarina can be pretty scary, but if you're playing Maokai, she won't be able to do anything in team fights. This is when picking Maokai can be especially rewarding. If the enemy comp locks a super heavy melee comp, Mao just has so much value because the enemy will need to dive in to do anything, but Maokai will just stop them in their tracks. Rush item for Maokai is Trailblazer, and this item being introduced into the game for season 14 is a huge reason why the champ is so powerful. Locket and Frozen Heart are interchangeable second items, while Solstice Slay is the best support item upgrade. Take Aftershock for the Keystone Rune with Font of Life, Bone Plating, and Unflinching. Biscuits and Cosmic Insight are the way to go for secondaries. Carrying from low elo support becomes so much easier if you spam a mage like Zyra. Zyra is almost always one of the best supports you can play for low elo, and she's honestly become even better for season 14 with all the item changes. With the new support upgrade, you have more damage output, and the added health you get from Leandries means your margin for error is higher, and you won't get blown up instantly for making positional errors. With Zyra, it's all about finding that one catch with E, and then following up with your full combo. Positioning in the side lane brush at level 6 and waiting patiently for the enemy support or ADC to walk up too far will have you picking up kills in nearly every single game. It's not just Zyra's catch strength that makes her so powerful though, as her straight up team fight is incredibly potent. The zone control with Zyra's plants and R make her super strong around objectives, so you really want to be focused on objective timers and trying to get vision down well before they spawn. The two core items you want for every single game on Zyra consists of Leandries and Rylize, while Zaxax Realm Spike is the support item upgrade. Be sure to grab Comet for the Keystone Rune with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Best secondaries are Taste of Blood and Relentless Hunter. If you're someone who likes to play both support and jungle, then climbing out of low elo has never been easier, with Brand being as strong as he is. We have Brand in our top three for jungle, and we have no choice but to place him in our top three for support as well. The champion just has so much carry power with his team fight and objective taking capabilities. Although Zyra may have stronger zone control, Brand's raw damage output in a grouped up team fight is definitely higher, so if you want to be that main damage source for your team in hard carry fights, look no further. Brand really only needs one item to be effective, and that's Leandries. You could completely int the early game with Brand, but as long as you're able to complete Leandries and group up with your team, you'll still be impactful, which is a big reason to why he's so strong for low elo. Once you have Leandries, you really don't even need your 
ADC to do anything for you to carry games, as you'll have enough damage yourself to win out in skirmishes. Brand's core build is that exact same as Zyra's, with Rylai's the second pickup, and Zaxax's Realm Spike being the support upgrade. The best rune page for Brand support is Comet, with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Biscuits and Cosmic Insight are the optimal secondaries. If you truly want to improve and rank up fast, head on over to skillcap.com. We just finished a massive update adding all brand new courses for Season 14. We even upload 10 new Smurf commentaries each week, where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. And remember, you can try all this out risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted this season. So that's going to be all for our Season 14 update on the best champions for low elo. Thank you all so much for watching, good luck with your rank climbs, and we'll see you back soon.